Well, um, hi again. Now we have to go through the most difficult part of this session is the interactive session. And as you can see, we are going to touch many technical issues. I hope everything goes smoothly. Just to let you know, the, the comments will be closed uh, right after the last uh, presenter of the, of the proposal. So for this proposal or unified proposal, we have three in, uh, groups and each coordinator will have a short introduction between two or three minutes to say what has been the work that they have done in the back. So, uh, because you all know that this unified proposal have come from three or uh, at least three other proposals. So what we're gonna try to do now is to give them credit of what they have done in this three minutes talk of introduction of what they have done. So now I wanna give the floor first to Francis Wasiek. Uh, uh, he's a senior law student at the Cardinal Stefan Wyszynski University in Warsaw. And he has experience working at the Lassung and Partners. And he has been expanding his launch in, in the European Union law. So Francis, I give you the floor for ten, three minutes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Alex. Uh, it's uh, an honor for me. Um, we define uh, child development uh, as a sum of uh, mm, the phases for which a person goes through from birth to early adulthood. And there are many factors uh, influencing these phases. We have decided to present them by concentrating on three main elements, showing the contrast between a model family and a family with several dysfunctions in the social, perspective, indicating the value of the pro-family policy in Poland for a widely understood welfare of the child and finally by proposing concrete solutions for European Union in political, eco economic and legal aspect. Social aspects are extremely important uh, when it comes to child development. There is no denying that family plays a crucial role in forming a child's personality and has a huge impact on who we become. With the right support, love and understanding, children are more likely to develop a set of character traits that equip them to live a successful and accomplished life. Not only our attitudes, habits, beliefs and values are highly affected by the background we are raised in, but also our social skills, the way we interact with other people, our potential opportunities and finally, our goals and how we decide to pursue them. The complex of acts uh, concerning the support of the families implemented after 2015 uh, in Poland, including a um, program of direct financial support for the families with children called 500 plus, positively affected the Polish family situation. It raised the fertility rate reduced over 19% the level of the poverty among children and helped many poor families to raise their standard of living. The birth rate in Europe is unsatisfactory at the moment. Its level is, is not sufficient to secure even the stride reproduction. To achieve some positive effects in this area, it is necessary, in my opinion, among the other to unify regulations of European countries concerning the support for the woman during the maternity peri period, develop European system of support for the families, raising children, elaborate new all European approach to properly guarantee women right to work in period of raising the children. We hope that the governments of European countries, as well as European institutions, understand those problems and will implement the effective strategy to resolve them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Francis. I mean, and also for the <laughs> for uh, taking account into the time. And now I give the floor to Anna Maria. She comes from the group two. Anna Maria, you have the floor. 
Good morning, everyone. I am from Colombia and as a coordinator of Group 2, mainly composed by students and professors from Universidad de la Sabana and also some external members, there are three aspects that I want to highlight. First, we affirm the importance of the problem chosen by the group. Second, recognize the usefulness of collaborative work. And third, draw attention to the importance of encouraging the negotiation and advocacy capacity of young professionals. First, I want to highlight that in group two, we selected the topic of children born of war and those who are children of combatants and who are separated from their parents voluntarily or by force. In our research, we found that this problem happens in at least 13 countries in four continents, and this has an important impact on child development, in their physical and mental health, in their education, identity, and family relations. This problem is related to the principles of family unity and the best interest of the minor, regulated both by international human rights law and international humanitarian law. Likewise, it has, a, it has a close relationship with the Sustainable Development Goals adopted by all member states, particularly SDG 3, 5, and 16. Although this situation has great international relevance, we found that it is poorly documented and therefore poorly regulated. For this reason, it is necessary to promote articulated efforts between states, non-state actors, civil society, and of course, international bodies, especially because we still have many conflicts around the globe affecting our children. This is a problem of the greatest relevance. Second, I want to acknowledge the importance of collaborative work. In our team, we discussed, researched, and made joint proposals. This allowed us to realize the gaps that still exist in the chosen problem. And then, in the meeting with the other groups, we discover new topics and approaches that enrich our skills and increase our interest in family matters. Finally, I want to draw attention to the need to strengthen our advocacy and negotiation skills as young professionals. While we were working in the design of the unified proposal, we were faced with two issues that are completely different from ours. However, we discover a common concern to work for child development. Based on this common interest, we were able to design a coherent unified proposal that includes the central concerns of each team. I believe that no team lost anything in the negotiation. We all gained experience and knowledge, and we were able to position the problematic situation of children born of war, and we got other delegations to think seriously about this issue. That is why our recommendations for UNICEF were included in the final proposal. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Ana Maria. It's always a pleasure to hear from Latin America. Now I, I give the floor to Renato. He uh, Renato Corsi. He represents the group eight. That is kind of a miscellaneous group, as I already told you. Renato, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Alex, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, everybody. And uh, yes, um, I'm here speaking on behalf of Group 8. And first of all, I would like to explain to the larger audience that uh, our group was, a, let's say, a more heterogeneous group than the first two that have been presenting today because we, we had um, members, participants from different regions uh, we had, for instance, participants like me from Italy, but working uh, in different countries, such as Belgium in my case, or France now, in the case of Francesca. And then uh, we had also a member from uh, Turkey, a member from USA, and another member from India, but working in the USA. So uh, we had these different uh, regional backgrounds, and this was really interesting because the, in the first meetings we had, after introducing ourselves and getting to know each other, we also devoted uh, quite a lot of time in order to find a, a common, uh, let's say, find an agreement, a common point as the main focus for our uh, statement to be shared then with group number one and number two. And uh, then 
looking at the current situation at the global level, uh, we decided to uh, focus on the topic uh, of the positive role of the family in preventing uh, children from domestic violence. Why? Uh, because we also uh, made a reference in our final statement as group number eight to a WHO report uh, mentioning the fact that there, there has been registered an increase in domestic violence and helpline calls in different countries, in different regions of the world uh, during the pandemic, uh, especially because of the lockdown measures that have been taken by many states all over the world uh, in order to fight the, the spread of the pandemic. Therefore, uh, you, you will find also in the final statement that we agreed together with the friends from uh, group number one and group number two, you will find in the recommendations of this final statement also uh, the recommendation number two that is explicitly mentioning what I'm trying to explain to you now, namely, um, we highlighted the fact that as the role of the family for the nurturing and protection of the children is fundamental, parents should be supported to allow the child to grow in an atmosphere of love, happiness and understanding. It is indeed necessary to implement interventions to address the causes of domestic violence and to improve parent-child relationships. So we are eager to um, discuss with you uh, this final statement and to learn from you also on how uh, we can better shape this statement on also preventing domestic violence. Thank you very much. Thank you, Renato. It's, it's always a, a pleasure to have, I mean, you, you had a, a great job there <laughs> agreeing with everybody. And now I'm just going to introduce this small part we're going to be done and we cannot proceed to the discussion. So the main, I already told you in the, in the group, the main um, objective that we have when we think of this exercise in a way is how difficult it is to funnel those ideas that come from realities that are national, regional, or local into the global perspective. Also, how difficult it is to work with others, even though they're on the same page, probably uh, they agree with us in many ways, but they have other perspectives. And we, we experience that in our group as well. And, and, at the same, and, and, and at the same time, we have to agree on something. And that's what the last exercise was, was about. Agree on the unified proposal. And now that we have come to this point, everybody, all the participants are kind of joining in, in in these contributions and you are going to be the ones who allow them to contribute to your uh, statement or not so i'm just going to be the moderator and we're going to have the same order of interventions probably one minute each of who i mean what commentary or suggestion from the audience from the rest of participants you will accept to change your statement so after Looking into the agreed draft proposal, we're going to start with Francis, then Ana Maria, then Renato to see which changes you agree. And then you can actually talk at the same time later to debate. Oh, let, let's leave this. Let's leave that. And if you see fit to call the person who submitted the comment, let me know because they should be here connected and they can turn on the camera and explain themselves what they really mean with that change, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen with the uh, already closed uh, uh, for comments. Everybody can just view it. And we have here an expert on the issue, actually, Ryan Coe. Uh, he is uh, another good friend. He's a representative of LDS, Later Day Saints International at the United Nations. And he's also head of the, or of the NGO Committee on the Family. So he start uh, together with Kateri, that it's also from uh, LALA. It's an NGO from Colombia. They use, and she has a, I mean, a 
worldwide experience on NGOs. She was working for an NGO that is headquartered here in, in New York. Maybe an introductory phrase, if you agree with that, uh, we'll, we'll discuss it. Then Ryan, Ryan definitely pinpoints something that is interesting. That, oh, what is your definition of children? Then Mr. Verlich, an expert that has been joining today, it's suggesting something for demographic change and the impact on vulnerable families that goes directly to Francisek, if he agrees. Then Kateri is also suggesting something that was proposed by all of you, <laughs> not only that, that kind of holistic approach, and you will see all of them. So, um, Renato, can, uh, Francisek, can we, start with, can we start with you? I agree. I agree with this okay. part included. Yeah, I would just add something uh, after the comma, maybe, or in between the two sentences, because otherwise there is no logical consequence be between the, the first Very sentence cool. and the we recommend. Great. So either we put in the beginning, uh, like, uh, since uh, strong and healthy families, blah, 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 or after the comma, we can put like hence or therefore, I don't know, just to make uh, logical the, the connection between the two. We can keep it as it was, right? Yeah, it was a okay. hence there, so we can keep it like that. All right. Um, we have added this, including through parental education programs. Uh, from Anais Bustamante, we what should we agree on? Should we add the fourth area? Uh, I think the form that uh, we have now uh, is, uh, um, in my perspective, we, we give acceptance for, 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 okay. for that. What about right. you, Ana Maria and Renato? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. It's really... Uh, we, yeah, yeah. As I said before, I like to edit. Yeah. Great. So it seems that we have finished this with a lot of effort and, <laughs> and discussion, yeah. but it's definitely finished and it's definitely on time. I invite you to kind of look at it and tell me, especially the, the authors, if something is missing or if you wanna um, look into something, but this is the first interactive session that we have uh, be, uh, these days. Tomorrow we have another one and the third one we have another one. So you're definitely <laughs> um, invited to contribute as today many people have contributed from from Gloria, Ryan, Remy, uh, Jorge, Anais. So really thankful for your contributions. And, and this is your work. I mean, this is what you have done. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Now for the session where we are going to discuss uh, the agreed statement of groups four and three groups. Group four is composed by the Brazilians and the people from Cape, Cape Verde. So, uh, they've, been, they've been meeting for, for some time. And also group three is composed by the Dutch and the Swedish, Swedish. So, first of all, uh, I would like to give the floor to both of the coordinators of the group to speak. So I'll give first for Ko and Vermi two minutes to, to give your first address on what your group has discussed. And then I'll give the floor to Amanda. Please, Cohen, you have the yes. floor for two minutes. Great. So thank you. Um, yeah, thank you for moderating today and uh, introduction as well. And uh, thank you to all the speakers for sharing the insights they gained. Uh, well, just as Rodolfo said, I am uh, coordinator of 
Group 3. I'm a student here in the Netherlands. I study uh, law and uh, comparative literature. Uh, my group and I, uh, we met in person at an event at the European Parliament on uh, youth transitions in February, where we were invited by the EFFD to participate. And it was actually a, a few weeks uh, before the pandemic started. So we were really lucky to have the chance to actually meet in person. Uh, and when Ignacio approached me to coordinate one of the work groups, uh, it allowed us a, a good chance to elaborate on topics that we had already discussed in February. Uh, and we chose to focus on the subtopic uh, of uh, work family balance, uh, mostly because we find this topic to be uh, very fundamental. Uh, it governs a lot of our day-to-day -day life and it has developed in a problematic way. Uh, just as uh, Ms. Miranda and uh, Ms. Ullmann also noticed, is the group of young professionals is mostly hit hardest, especially during crises. Um, and on top of this, the this digitalization has expanded the work floor into our homes. But the rules concerning labor have not yet developed accordingly. Uh, and at the same time, often both parents hold a job which has changed traditional family dynamics. Uh, so you can hear we have more than enough to talk about. And I can assure you that for a statement of 350 words, that's very difficult. Um, but well, after several discussions, we formulated two main suggestions to improve the current situation, uh, which was firstly that we are a big advocate of the promotion of remote work. Uh, and of course, what we also discussed with, uh, discussed with Mrs. Romero in the first half of the session today is that the negative side effects of remote work should be limited. So one way I believe this is possible is with uh, the integration of the right to disconnect. And besides, uh, besides the promotion of remote work, we propose uh, paid parental leave for both parents, which we believe is, is absolutely crucial to establish connection between a child and its parent. So thank you, thank you for the time. Thank you very much, Cohen. Yes, it, as a moderator, I agree with you that it was a huge task to fit <laughs> in 350 words. So yeah, let's but see we made how it, it work. Goes. Yeah, yeah. Well, you did. I just like tried to, <laughs> to help you. Okay, thank you. So I'll give the floor for Amanda for... Good afternoon, everyone here in Latin America um, and also there all over the world. My name is Amanda. Oliveira was the coordinator for Group 4, composed by people from Brazil and, and Cape Verde. And even though we share the same language, we had different and local perspectives on youth transitions. But this was crucial to find a common ground that would fit uh, in a global perspective. So we gathered in online meetings, shared uh, research material, and discussed topics that we found most important. So we chose some of them. It was evident, firstly, to us that youth transitions are now more complex than ever. Unstable and informal jobs, financial difficulties, and social changes, not to mention the impacts of the pandemic on, the, on work and education dynamics. And that is why we found that the young person who is going through these new and complex transitions needs a holistic development that is centered in the construction of the youth identity which necessarily derives from the family they belong to, the city they live in, education, culture, and especially social emotional background. Uh, but, the, but this network of relationships around the young person that is capable of forming, welcoming, and supporting them is composed by different agents, such as family, schools, and universities, companies, community, and state with complementary tasks. As a result, we focus on the integration between family education and work, as it was mentioned today, as a foundation to this holistic development of young people. So we suggested, uh, I tried to reduce because there were so many suggestions. So firstly, we suggested uh, public policies aimed at the strengthening of family ties to enable healthy environment for educational, cultural, and social development of young people Secondly, a, a comprehensive education provided by the sport network that ensure the learning of both technical and social emotional skills, the so-called uh, soft skills. And lastly, 
uh, tax benefits and other incentives implemented by the state for companies that promote the insertion of young people in the labor market. Uh, one topic that was uh, very important was uh, to search for solutions within the whole network and community uh, that act together in the development of this young decision maker. Uh, we had many things to say and suggest, but this was the, the main things we tried to recommend and then put on the statement uh, uh, together with group three. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amanda, for your comments. Uh, it's interesting to note that this pandemic has brought some universal issues. So at first, when we had the first meeting of the coordinators with the moderator, which was Amanda, Cohen, me, uh, Cohen was concerned, a bit concerned about, well, this may be, be may, may can be just an European issue. And we mentioned that, no, this is a global issue previously to, to the pandemic. And right now, it's interesting that the, considering of course, local situations are completely different, but the challenge is, is kind of universal the, to, to face the pandemic. So we have all these issues rising, uh, somehow very similarly everywhere. So it, it created a link, a very interesting link to, to discuss. And also I'd like to mention that we look for a kind of backbone in order to merge the two draft statements that we had from group, groups three and four. And I think somehow this was managed by, by the coordinators. So as you can see in the agreed statement. So I think we should go into it. So I'm sharing my, my screen. And I please advise you not to make any further comments over there because it's going to, to make things like very difficult to, to deal. First of all, I think we should introduce this merged document, this agreed proposal. So first I'll, I'll give the floor to Amanda to make a, a brief comment on, on, on the organization and Cohen to, to, to add something and to, to discuss you. just to, to, to show the, what's the backbone, what's behind this, and I mean, and then we, co and we can go to the comments and suggestions that the other participants have been made in here. Hello again and welcome to the third session. I don't know if you have been able to see the results of the voting, but they express what I think the groups that are going to intervene today thought about what the definition of intergenerational solidarity is, a social cohesion between generations. We are now going to give the floor to the coordinators of the three groups who work on the unified proposal. First, with their own draft statement, and then with this uh, final one. So I first uh, give the floor to Chiara Leda. She is the coordinator of group five. Chiara, you have the floor. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for uh, this experience. My name is Chiara Leda. I am 21 years old, and I come from Sardinia in Italy. I am speaking here today on behalf of a group of young people who come from different Italian regions, with most of whom we came to contact following the conference on youth transition, we, which took place in Brussels this February, organized by IFSC. United by a strong interest in what concerns family policies and family well-being, we decided to, partic to participate to the International Advocacy Workshop and to bring our contribution in the realization of the unified proposals on the theme of intergenerational solidarity. For the realization of our draft statement and proposals, we decided to use a personal approach 
starting from our daily experiences and analyzing how intergenerational solidarity was present within our families, sometimes weakly or strongly. This has allowed us to clearly see what are the shortcomings and strengths related to this issue. Considering the interaction between generations are largely influenced by various social, psychological, and economic elements, the consequences can whether improve the interaction between the different generations or increase the conflict. It is very hard, particularly in a country like Italy, that counts one of the oldest population in the world, to fill this huge gap between elderly adults and young people. We think this issue is fundamental because despite the enormous changes in ways of living that have been taking place in these recent decades, investing in it means transforming differences into opportunities for intergenerational exchange of emotional and instrumental support. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Chiara. And now I give the floor to Charles Aikbona. We have already seen him today. He is the coordinator of Group 6, um, a, a, a very large group of members from Africa, from Kenya, Nigeria, South Africa, and I think they have worked very hard and he has a very, very good things to share now. Charles, you have the floor. Oh, thank you very much, Ignacio. Um, I'm Charles Aigbona from um, Nigeria, coordinator of Group 6. Group 6 is composed of um, 33 members from, um, with uh, people, delegates from Kenya, Nigeria, South Africa, and Ethiopia. We began by having a familiarization meeting of we getting to know our names, our different locations, and a brief discussion of the organization we, we represent. Then we zoomed into the theme, which is this international solidarity, and we decided, made some critical decision on how we're going to handle it. So the perspective of which we're going to handle it from, and also, we said we will end with a call to action. We immediately appointed um, three persons to get into making a, a draft of the draft, after which we all looked at it and we, we uh, made our input and sent for the university unified proposal. To say that this topic is quite imp uh, important to us, that we, um, we propose the voice of Africa in this. Um, we, we talked about the uh, contract between the different, different generations, both economic and also the, the, the social connection. And we, we learned a lot um, from this. And also we, the speakers, especially Bahara and uh, Trapp, um, since she said about this um, low uh, replacement level in most parts of the world, and he mentioned that, okay, Africa is, is fed of this. I was like, okay, maybe something the world has to learn from us. Um, and also, we, today we also learned a few things about this demographic shift in the workplace and, and, that, and the different good practices. Okay, all this is put in our um, draft proposal, which is a unified proposal. So I will not go into details of that document, which we all have. Thank you, Ignacio. Thank you very much, Charles. And now, finally, we go to the coordinator of Group 7, Susa Ratne. So, thank you, Ignacio. And uh, hello, everyone. My name is Susa Ratne, representing the Group of Hungary. I work at a research institute, but now I am on maternity leave with my 11-month-old daughter. We are lucky here in Hungary because mothers have the opportunity to stay with their child at home for the first three years on parental leave. Our group consists of young people from different regions of the country and from different fields of profession. However, we are all in good relation with the National Association of Large Families and we have one common interest and this is family issues. We are all committed to protect family as a fundamental unit of society as well as to promote cooperation and solidarity between the different generations. 
intergenerational solidarity has many crucial aspects. First, we discuss challenges that Hungary and many other countries face, like aging society, problems of care system, not recognized unpaid work, migration of youth and its effects to their parents and to the whole family. We have chosen to highlight one interesting topic in our statement that is increasingly becoming a challenge for many families, though it is not discussed that often. It is, this is the care for the elderly and their participation in child rearing. This issue uh, has two main dimensions. On the one hand, it is important to bear in mind that care provided for relatives is a resource of a concrete economic value. In other words, availability of this free caregiving resource allows younger generations to be active on the labor market and releases the government from the obligation to provide care for elderly citizens. However, on the other hand, there are multiple tensions between social expectations, declarations and individual practices within the sphere of caregiving. With lower income, longer hours are spent on work each day and less hours spent with our loved ones, which will force the younger generation to choose between their future and their past. We proposed some good practices implemented in Hungary to show concrete measures that can relieve the burden of the society in this field. For instance, the so-called grandparents' child fee, but Kinga also mentioned in her presentation, or supporting local businesses and communities, and for example, volunteering programs. During the statement writing process, we gained not only new knowledge and experience about the topic, but we improved our skills of teamwork and collaboration. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks very much, Susa, for all your work during this time. And now we'll go to the, to the proposal. Then there is a comment, um, by Jose Ricardo, who is also one, once more uh, helping us. In this paragraph, I think the words they could be replaced by we, because the use of the third person ends up to seem that just African countries are urging for. Okay, do you agree, Susha, Charles, Chiara? I, I agree also, I saw that uh, he put this recommendation also at the end of the document. Yes. Uh, and I think uh, it's true. Yeah, I agree. Okay, Susha? Yeah. Susha? Yes, I agree. I think it's uh, more personal uh, when okay. we are speaking. Uh, and you, Charles? Yeah, is it not them? Right. Okay, so I think with that we have, we have nearly finished because this would be the final outcome of the, um, uh, of the statement we will make. So now for this uh, last five minutes, I would like uh, you to make any comments. You would like to, not, not, not only the coordinators of today, but all of you, and especially the coordinators of all the groups, to, to, to tell us if they have some suggestions for future work like this. Do you think, has this been useful for you? Or yes. you, you, you would have preferred another way of learning how to make a statement? Or what do you think about this, Charles? Now from Africa, um, there are three members of my group I would like to speak, um, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, Okay. Andy, okay. Tina, and then Brandy. Okay, Andy, you, you can start. It's all right. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Ignacio, and all the participants from all around the world. It's a privilege to have to work on this statement uh, from a regional level to the unified position. It's a learning process, and uh, when we're looking at it, there were several things that came to our mind. At the end of the day, we have to arrive at a unified position. That gives me a lot of experience and a room to learn and grow as well. In the future, I would like us to look at it from intergenerational solidarity with respect to political inclusion. 
because in this uh, position that we provide today in this statement, we have not made much uh, uh, points around the political inclusion, which is very, very important to us in Africa and in Nigeria in particular. Therefore, for future purposes, maybe 2021 IAW workshop, we'll be looking about uh, including political intergenerational solidarity. That would be my take for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandy. Who else? Okay, then no? Brandy, Brandy from South Africa and Tina okay. from Kenya. Okay, Brandy. Um, good evening or afternoon, everyone. Um, I would like to say I'm very grateful for the opportunity, but most importantly, I've learned a lot in relation to intergenerational solidarity. Um, specifically in relation to understanding that it, it does not necessarily have to be limited um, to the family space, but in incorporating the idea that Charles um, raised, it's important to also think about ways of incorporating it within the, um, um, the workspace as well. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to going back and, and working in collaboration with him and um, others to submit the final unified proposal. Thank you. Can okay, I say so, some words? Yeah, sure, you can. Okay. So, well, I mean, um, you, you are the one who have said most uh, words, so it's good for you. And, uh, so, uh, thank you. Uh, first, I want to present myself. My name is José. I'm from Brazil. And I'm very happy to be here because this is my first conference. And also, I'm a high school student. I'm the last year, so I try to to work and to collaborate with anyone the best way. So thank you for this opportunity and I think this is a crucial opportunity for all youth person and for all people around the world to discuss with other people of different backgrounds to merge everything and make solutions with a better application. So, and I want to thank you for Kadri Salas uh, who uh, presented this event for me and she's the reason for me being here now. So thank you. Uh, this is Elizabeth from Kenya. Oh, okay. So uh, it's quite a great privilege to, you know, be able to take part in this uh, very noble uh, workshop and uh, being able to just discuss uh, intergenerational solidarity. This is very crucial, especially in our country. And, uh, you know, seeing how we can be able to link um, the ties that have died uh, so many times. Um, days ago. So we really look forward to the uh, final document that will help especially to strengthen the family ties uh, in helping us achieve the cohesion in the families that is really uh, needed, especially now when, you know, families have um, gone through a lot of changes and uh, learned so much from this uh, COVID uh, pandemic you know, just knowing how we can be able to really live together harmoniously without feeling the stress of uh, being um, forced to live together during emergencies and such kind of uh, issues. So thank you very much. Thanks very much to everyone, really. And uh, we look forward to organize this next year. We don't know what's going to happen. Maybe it will be face to face, as we say, which, which is what we liked it. But maybe this having it online has also been a, a very good experience. So we'll have to think about it. Now, during five minutes, I will ask you all to open your cameras so that Alex can take pictures of all of us okay so starting now please open all your cameras and alex take this so thank you very much and see you next year or even